Pacing is one of the most important parts of storytelling, and today I'm going to teach you how to control the pace of your own stories. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm a writer, and welcome to my writing channel. Today I'm going to be talking about pacing, which is such an important part of the storytelling process, and it's a great tool to have in your arsenal, and yet so many writing guides and writing teachers, they kind of push it off to the side when they're explaining all the different writing skills and all the different things you need to learn about. Oftentimes we're so busy talking about character and setting and plot and all the other important things that pacing just kind of gets forgotten. But today I want to, you know, bring pacing back into the forefront. I want to talk about it, and I want to talk about two specific types of pacing. We're going to be talking about big picture pacing, which involves the, the type of pacing that happens over the course of your entire story, like is the story exciting from start to finish, or is the middle of the story exciting, that kind of big picture stuff. We're also going to be talking about the more nitty gritty stuff, the stuff, the kind of pacing that you see within scenes, or within paragraphs, or even within sentences. So we're going to cover both of these, and if you're struggling with either or, you're going to find this video very helpful. Now I want to start off by explaining what pacing is in the most basic terms. I think the, the easiest way to understand pacing is to think about the question of how badly do readers want to get more info out of your story. If they are craving the next chapter or the next scene or whatever it is, if they want to keep moving through that story, that means that your story has great pacing. With big picture pacing, we're concerned about the story as a whole. We're wondering, are the readers going to stick around until the very end? Are they going to rush towards the end because they care about what happens? Or are they going to force themselves to continue and possibly even quit the book in the process? Who knows? But I think the most important thing to remember when we're talking about these big picture ideas is to focus on raising and answering questions throughout the course of the story. This goes back to the idea of setups and payoffs, which is something I talk about a lot on this channel. Oftentimes, early on in the story, we will set something up, we will plant a seed that will grow later on in the story. Something that happens in Act 1 will pay off in Act 2, or maybe in Act 3. As long as you have your, your story raising questions and you know, putting thoughts in the reader's heads and making them think like, hmm, I wonder how that's going to play out, you are building toward a good story pace. Now, the best time to raise a question is at the end of a scene or the end of a chapter, and these are, of course, called cliffhangers. We know all about these. They're pretty popular technique. And they're popular because they're an effective technique. And cliffhangers work because they send the message to the reader that says, hey, guess what? I just raised a question, and if you stick around and you flip pages and you keep moving through my book, you will get an answer to that question and you will like it. Readers love to be pulled along by their curiosity, so if you can end a chapter on a question, that's a great way to maintain pacing because a lot of readers, as they're going through a book, they'll tell themselves, you know what? Once I finish this chapter, I think I'm going to break away from the book and I'm going to go to bed or I'm going to start dinner or whatever it is. But if you end on a strong cliffhanger, one that they can't walk away from, they're going to keep flipping pages. So that's a great way to maintain pacing. Another effective way to maintain pacing is by jumping back and forth between plot lines. This is something that we see in movies like Empire Strikes Back, where you have Luke's plot line, and then you'll have one of his scenes end on a cliffhanger, and then we'll go back to the, the, the Han Solo and Princess Leia plot line, and then their scene will end on a cliffhanger, we'll go back to Luke, or maybe we'll go back to Darth Vader. But the point is that we're jumping between these different plot lines so we don't get burned out on one or another. This is great, and it if you have multiple plot lines in your story, I highly recommend you do this. One final thing I want to mention in regards to big picture pacing is the idea of balancing out the conflict within your story. When we talk about conflict, there's high conflict and there's low conflict, and you need both. If you just have high conflict scene after high conflict scene after high conflict scene, your audience is going to get burned out, so it's important to stick some low conflict scenes in there as well. And that, that's just something that helps maintain the, the effectiveness and the excitement that you see in those higher conflict scenes. Now that we've covered the big picture stuff, I want to move on to scene and sentence level pacing. And this, of course, deals with the nitty gritty stuff, the actual writing on the page. So when you're trying to control the pacing from scene to scene and maybe even paragraph to paragraph, one of the key things to remember is that the size of your paragraphs and the size of your sentences will often determine the pace of your story. So 
For instance, if you want to slow things down, write longer paragraphs. Make it so that your reader is reading across the page, across the page, across the page, back and forth, back and forth. When you want to speed things up, write shorter paragraphs. Have it so that they're one-line paragraphs. That way the reader is just going down vertically, one sentence after another, boom, 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 toward the bottom of the page and then onto the next page and so on. This can be a great effective way to give them a sense that they're really moving through the story. They're turning pages and they're just moving a mile a minute. And you know what? If you're going to pull this off you need to be careful however because if you overdo it with the fast pace the the one line paragraphs they will wear down your reader the effect will be diminished over time you don't want that so you need to have balance another thing to balance out when you're writing these kind of stories you have to worry about balancing description with action. I think we've all read those types of stories where there's just too much description and it just bogs us down and it's a chore to get through the book. Now at the same time, if you just have action, 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 your readers are going to be kind of clueless as to the world around your characters and you know what kind of thoughts are going through their heads and stuff like that. So you want to have that balance and I think when you are describing settings, one thing to remember is that you always want your settings to be active. You always want them to be in motion. And for instance, you could describe a tree or you could describe a tree that is blowing in the wind and making cracking noises. There is a huge difference between those two kinds of descriptions. You can describe a house with an old ugly wooden porch or you can have a character step onto that wooden porch and have their weight cause a series of popping and creaking sounds to send the message home. Anytime your setting can be active you have to jump on that. You don't want to just have these these boring static settings always find a way to keep them active. Now as far as sentence level pacing, I want to teach you a really cool advanced technique. And this is something I learned from a writing guide years ago. It talked about how you have to think of your sentences the way comedians think of their jokes. And of course when we think of a comedian telling a joke, we know they have a setup and then it, there's, there's some suspense building toward a punchline at the end. Now when you're writing a sentence, Every sentence can potentially have a punchline. And depending on where you place that punchline, your sentences can really push the pacing along. Now to illustrate this, I want to show you a sentence written in two different ways. The first way is going to be with the punchline written at the very beginning of the sentence. And the punchline is the interesting information that we're getting out of a sentence, if you need an explanation of it. But uh, we're going to show you the first one with the punchline at the beginning, and then the second one, we're going to hold on to the punchline until the very end. And I want, to, I want you to pay attention to how these two sentences read. Now let's say our scenario is we're writing a thriller story. We have a character, we'll say her name is Sarah, and she's been trapped in this building for maybe a few days or something like that and she's finally found an exit and it's right down the hall and she just needs to get to it and for for the sake of excitement we'll say that when she gets to that exit there's there's this hissing sound that, that just comes out of nowhere and that's what scares her that would be our punchline now I'm gonna write this sentence in two ways so pay attention to the first one this is where the punchline is at the very beginning a hissing sounded when Sarah crept toward the door now that's a pretty decent sentence, but pay attention to this second one where we hang on to the punchline until the very end. Sarah crept toward the exit when a hissing sounded. Now if you notice with that second sentence, it opens up with the character, it shows the character in action, there's some build up before we finally get that, that hissing noise, that surprise. And that puts us in the character's shoes. We get to, you know, feel the impact of that shocking moment right as Sarah does. Now on the other hand, in that first sentence, the, the, there is no impact because we just get the hissing noise right at the front and then the back end of that sentence is just kind of tacked on there. It's just, you know, when Sarah crept toward the door and we've already had the big impactful moment. So those words that come after it, they don't have the same amount of impact. Now I want to give you another example to illustrate this one some more. So I'm just going to write a paragraph and in this paragraph, every single sentence is going to end with a punchline. Lisa yanked on the handle, but the drawer remained stuck. She tried the silver key, and the lock turned with a satisfying pop. Inside, she found a revolver. The handle was smeared with blood. When she touched the gun, she realized the blood wasn't human. Now, each one of these sentences ends with a punchline. The drawer is stuck. It unlocks with a pop. She finds a revolver. She, she notices blood. She realizes the blood isn't human. All of these things, they keep the readers invested, and they send the message to the reader subconsciously that every time a reader starts a sentence, it will end with something interesting. Now, you don't have to do this all the time over the course of your story. That's asking a lot. But if you're writing a particularly interesting scene, you might want to focus on arranging your sentences so that they end with some kind of impact, some kind of punchline. It's a great tip, something to keep in the back of your mind, especially during the bigger moments in your story. But if you 
you get one thing out of this video, I think it should be the idea that whenever you're concerned with pacing, whether it's, you know, the large scale stuff or the sentence level stuff, whenever you signal to your reader that there will be exciting stuff down the line or there will be interesting stuff later on, just wait for it reader, just hang on, keep flipping those pages. As long as you send that message to the reader, you will keep them invested and you will boost the pacing throughout the course of your story. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, in your opinion, what is one example of a well-paced story and one example of a poorly paced story? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend if you don't mind. And as always, remember to keep on writing.